So now I'll pair these split tenons and start to fit them and dedicate them into particular mortises. So here I want that to be the top of this stretcher. That's the surface that was near the bark in the tree. It's straighter than what's near the middle of the tree. Uh, it's a little bit m more consistent in thickness. So I'll, I'll have it go that way in the stool. So I'll work that, uh, that tenon first. And you can see when you split them, they're gonna be a little bit irregular sometimes. So it takes a little bit of pairing to get them to fit. And I am back to the bench hook for this work. You can use uh, whatever you've got for a pairing chisel. I have a couple here that are uh, well suited for this. The one I use the most for years and years is this big one. Uh, this is really a, a framing chisel, a timber framing chisel. And it's two inches broad, it's quite heavy. Um, so you just brace it against the bench hook and pair across the grain. And I just flip it around and do a little under my arm and things that come this way. But it's hard to come onto the tenon. And then, so it's a lot of back and forth. that and sometimes they need almost nothing to trim them the better quality stock you get the less work you have to do and then it's a matter of just sort of tilting it in I'm not trying to put it all the way in the tenon but just get a feel for where where I am how close I am I don't want to have to pound it in there it's going to rely on the drawboard pins really to secure that joint more than anything else. So here I can feel it's still a little thick in that way is what I'm after. So you can just tilt a corner of it in like this and like that. And then where do you take it off? Do you take it off the front or the back? Uh, you can sight down there and sometimes see that it needs some work. You want to look parallel to this plane on that cheek and see if there's any bump in here that's uh, impeding that going in. Do the same on the back cheek. And that's what I'm after right there and right there. So now I can put that in. The height might be a little bit uh, a little bit snug and sometimes what I do is just pair off a little off the bottom of the tenon that way and look at that goes right in there ultimately I want to sight this plane right here with that plane of the style and make sure that the rail isn't canted in like that or out like this so it wants to be plumb when this is plumb and just make sure that front shoulder comes all the way down to the style. I'm not concerned about the back shoulder in any way, shape, or form. So that one I know fits in there. I'm gonna grab one more chisel, this mortise chisel, just to, um, that's bigger than what I use, this will confuse them, just to mark this. So I'll hit, uh, one on there and a one on there so that that identifies this joint as going right there because later I'm going to have all these rails sitting on the bench and they all tend to look the same so I'll go by those keys to get that together so get that out of the way for right now and pair this tenon to fit that mortise in that uh, style. So I have a little more wood there, a little bit here to take down. If you don't have a big 
framing chisel like that, a long bladed paring chisel is very nice. A little bit light, so sometimes it might skitter around on you, but easier on your elbow. Pushing that smaller chisel than the bigger one. I tend to use the large one, but use what you've got. Don't, uh, don't think you have to go out and get one of these. I had this, that's why I used it. And then even lefty, I want to tear up these fibers here that are stuck to the shoulder. So I brought the chisel up on its uh, edge there to go across there, but switched to my left hand to do this. Sometimes easier to do that than to find the correct position. Still too thick, still too thick. And this might be long as well, but we'll deal with that last. So, you can take a little more off the end of the tenon than right at the shoulder. Uh, like that. If that'll make your life easier. And look at that, it does. So, there's one consideration on the apron, and that is the mortise does not come to the top of the stool because then the joint would be exposed up at the top of the stool. So now I need to cut this tenon down and the way that I uh, locate where to make that cut is just to lay the apron right on the, that line is the top of the stool. So I lay the top edge of the apron flush with that line and then here I see the line for the top of the mortise so I just prick that right there, carry that line over like that and then it's a very shallow saw curve like that, a tiny bit more And then I'll split that off. I don't need the bench square. I can just hold it with my fingertips to knock that off. And now you'll see that that will accommodate that tenon mostly. I'm still a little bit snug. I don't know if it's in, it must be in the height because the thickness was fine. So I can do a uh, couple of things. I can pair a little more off of there with my chisel. I don't know if you can see that. Just braced it on the on the block there on the uh, bench hook. See if it was the top end. It could also be the ends of the mortise might be dovetailing into the mortise. That's a little snug. So I can do the same thing I did before and pair some off of the bottom of the tenon as well. So I've just got my hip bracing that up against the bench hook and then take a sizable chunk out of that. And That's what I'm after. It's just about up to the top. I can certainly live with that. And it might be a little out of plumb, leaning a little bit that way. Then that problem is probably in the mortise. So I'll get rid of the bench hook, clamp this down, and pair the inside cheek of that mortise.
I'm going to just protect the turning there where I'm going to grab this. So just take that long bladed chisel. I need to grab a mortise chisel. come back now. So by pairing that inside wall I can push here and it has room to come back the way it's supposed to. And I'll mark this one number one as well. So I'll go around and do that to the other tenons and uh, we'll have that front section of the stool ready to draw bore. One of the pieces I forgot is I, I almost always uh, essentially point the tenons by pairing a bevel across their end. So I just take the chisel at an angle like that, come right across there, and just take a swipe like that. So they're just tapered right there at their ends. It's in case the tenon from the other direction uh, comes near this one also to help it bed down in the bottom of the mortise where there can be torn up fibers stuck down there. The old pieces of disassembled furniture I've seen have pointed tenons on them and so that's why I do it.